All right, we're starting it right. Oh shit! Now, oh, hello. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you, you, we, we're we're live streaming this podcast on Instagram because I haven't figured out. I guess I probably could live stream it on YouTube too. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, you, we're live streaming on uh on on Instagram. So we should probably just look at each other while we're talking. I'll okay. probably glance at the camera. This is all new to us guys, so bear with us. Bear in mind. I'm scared. Um. Yeah. So send this it, send of the nine. Yes. Uh, so today's podcast is going to be one of um, a series we're going to do, and it's 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 good that Blaze is here with me because um, I said, "Hey, I want to do this podcast series, and I want to do it with a bunch of my regular customers, regular people that come to the skate park, and I want to come up with a clever name for it." And uh, he had the name uh, "Local Lines," which is just great because we're looking for like a skate park joke, you know. Yeah. And uh, hope you know I don't know if kids know what local lines are because they don't do lines anymore but good riders stylish riders uh you know the lines are like that unique way you know when someone rides the bowl you're like oh look at that line it's like yeah it's a local line they've been here before so local lines is gonna you know i'm trying to do you know uh, maybe at least once one one a month to a month of these or something like that or i'll just bring in one of the random uh random regulars or customers sit down we'll just talk about who knows what uh yeah already two minutes in so Sweet. Here, uh, <laughs> we're here with Blaze, uh, what, what is it, Rosati? Yeah. Rizzuti? Rizzuto? Blaze Rosati. Is that Italian? Yeah, very. <laughs> Lots of vowels. It's like the, the <laughs> potato thing at Bantam, right? Or was the it? Roasty. Oh, I had one roasty. of those on my way here. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> nice. Shout out to Andy at uh, Bantam, like, he'll ever see this. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> one day. One day. Yeah. We'll um, take over the world with podcasting. I'm going to do a... Um, it's, I'm gonna record a podcast later, but I'm gonna post it before this one to point. Like, uh, I think I sound clearer without my teeth in. Oh, okay. And that raises a weird conflict of, uh, I guess, conflict of interest with how I feel about my teeth in the skate park. So that other podcast, which when this comes, would be the last podcast. So I don't know. Whatever. The end of the the, the teeth in generation. Yeah. To be able to differentiate the the podcast by that. Yeah. So uh, you're super regular at the park. Super. Uh, mostly because you don't pay. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, like the only one that doesn't pay yeah. that doesn't work there. <laughs> I, I think that's what, where I wanted to go with it is that the, the reason you don't pay segues right into uh, kind of where the skate park came from because yeah. your dad owned Rasp, which I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I'm not but sure But what either. was Rasp? <laughs> Rasp was a Rochester Action Sports Park. Not the, really uh, awesome skate park? No, not really awesome skate park. Not a whole bunch of other um, profanity you could make out of those <laughs> Resi word Action letters. Skate Park? Resi Action Skate Park, Are you yeah. keeping the Resi? Yeah. Uh, yes. Please answer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what was Rasp? Uh, yeah, Rasp was the skate park that um, my dad opened up, what was it, 2009, 10, we started. Um, my uncle had passed away and left us a significant amount of money that we, my dad wanted to put into something useful. And after uh, X, Xtreme's closing in East Rochester, we had no skate park for a couple of years and no one wanting to take on the... Uh, uh, the responsibility of having a place for everybody to ride. It's uh, not a small responsibility. No, it's uh, quite the <laughs> undertaking and <laughs> proved to be much more challenging than uh, even our best estimates and research could have uh, foreseen. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it's it, super it was tough. really tough. Um, so we were open for, what was it, like, when did we close? Like six years? Six, yeah, seven years? Six, six years. years we were open? August 16th, I think. Yeah. Um, so basically we just weren't profitable um people ask a lot of times like why the skate park closed it was just a matter of not um not being able to make it work um skate parks are a lot more expensive than a lot of people realize and i'm sure it's something you're going to get into more on here but it's a really interesting thing there because it's um it kind of comes boils down to the the value of a dollar really or, or the perception of the value of a dollar when you're you know when you're a kid you know you don't really have money unless your parents give you money or birthday parties. And so you don't have a really fair idea of what that is. And then you become, yeah, you get a little bit older and you get a job maybe, then you're not making a lot of money or you can't work a lot of hours. Then to you, you know, $15 to ride is kind of a big deal. And I, and I remember when I was younger, I didn't go to the skate park a lot because I couldn't, I literally couldn't afford it. It was like, if I went, I didn't eat or quite frankly, I would be stealing food to be able to eat or, you know, 
Yeah. I'll fix. I'll build you a wheel if you if you drive to the skate park. I'll rebuild your wheel, and you, can you buy me a Wawa sub or whatever? Yeah, I had one you friend barter um, your way to it. My friend Tom was on EBT for a minute, mm-hmm. and he would barter like gas money or s- skate park sessions. Like I'll buy you food with my food stamps <laughs> if you pay for me. Yeah, there you go. but yeah, so a lot of people come to the skate park and they're like, dude, fifteen dollars, twenty, <clears throat> what the hell, you know? And um, really, it should be a lot more. They than don't that. know. Yeah, yeah they no, it's it's really a steal if you think about like any other service that you would pay. What it's a four and a half hour session for fifteen dollars. Yeah. What does that end up being? You hourly? can't just do it hourly. <laughs> you know, it's just it's, yeah, it's just it, that no one likes to think about the real like logistics and uh, the actual work that goes into keeping an indoor skate park open. Um, yeah, I was telling like, dude, my rent's eight grand. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like you know, how, many, how many sessions is that? You don't know how many zeros are on the end of that number. <laughs> how many billions are in a trillion? Tr- trillions are in a billion? <laughs> it's, um, it's astronomical. It's not bad. Yeah. It's medicine. I think one of the one of the issues with RASP, I think the pricing structure was not ideal. Uh, and to bring that back to my the point I was just saying before about the pricing thing, to one of the issues with the skate park is... Um, you you're two totally different demographics coming in and they're very different spenders mm-hmm. and i think that the member non-member pricing structure that some parks use uh what it does is in my opinion and i'm pretty sure i could play out the economics to support this it it basically offers a price break to your customers that actually have the money to afford it and it doesn't offer the price break to the customers that you know are on a tighter budget I yeah think. and i played a when when we raised the prices at RASP, like, I did all the math on that. Like that was, I like did a, broke it all down and I presented it to, to your dad and uh, Tony, and I was like, well, here's, here's what it looks like, and here's what we could do, and here's some projections, and you know, you, you can pick uh, what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, I never really thought of it that way. That it's like, um, <clears throat> you know, the barrier for entry is a lot more for someone who doesn't have yeah. sixty dollars to throw at a session, yeah. even though you get, you would have gotten a free session that still is a, it's a higher entrance fee then a lot of people can swing at at that level i think one of the big differences between rasp and pfs is we i think we do have more core riders and Mm -hmm. a lot more skateboarders come in partially that i think was the image maybe the ramp layout maybe the image but the 17 dollar non-member pricing is just that wasn't going to happen for those guys you know yeah a lot of people don't you know don't want to the, you know, st- the stigma around riding your skateboard should be like a free activity yeah. is is a is a hard is a hard thing to get rid of because it you know uh, riding your skateboard for free is a really empowering thing and you don't want to take that oh, away yeah, from for somebody sure. for like you know it's just not profitable for an indoor skate park you know yeah so it's, it's a weird crossroad there well yeah it's funny they don't a lot of people don't think about it as um you know like uh, say the, there was public parks base you can just get on a baseball field it's like sure you play a, b- a baseball on just a grass field and yeah. kind of put your bases wherever or maybe don't have bases but then to pay you know 15 bucks to have two hours with you know a real baseline and real bases and like and having a pitcher's mound like that you'd be like wow you know um it's possible that indoor parks might could weather depending could be obsolete down the road but that's another whole nother thing there yeah. but yeah you, so yeah your dad was like the financial side and tony tony Britt was the i guess you could call him like the foreman i guess yeah, foreman kind of would the be general good, yeah. manager general yeah. operator yeah it was, they were equal partners i think yeah. or not not equal partners because my dad had put up all the money for it so he was majority owner mm-hmm. in it being an llc right so that makes it i don't know i don't know what the logistics on that is yeah, i'm, like, a, I'm no mathematician the CPA. yeah <laughs> I guess that so you were, you were one of those kids uh, that everyone envied, but also loved to shit talk. You were the kid that grew up at the skate park. I well, was. Of course, he could tell him his dad owned a skate park, dude. And evidently, I he didn't won't... end up being that good after that. <laughs> like you would you would think that a kid that that like grew up in a skate park and had yeah. a key to a skate park would be good, but I I'm not comparatively. You know, I, I see a, there's actually a couple kids that I've met that like their parents owned skate parks, or yeah. they were just fortunate enough to be at a skate park a lot and i don't know i i i got hurt a lot <laughs> my body doesn't has never like moved the right way and i, I think i got injured a lot because of that yeah. and um yeah it's just a weird it was a weird way to grow up bike riding i mean i had yeah. ridden a lot before we had the skate park but you know I, I thought i tried to be as aware of the fact that i uh was fortunate enough to have my own skate park yeah. and i tried to 
you know, not be a fucking douche about it. Dude, everyone talks shit about you when I moved up here. Yeah. Pretty much everyone. Yeah. Everyone hated you. You're like, yeah, he's a fucking brat. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh. God, I hate <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm supposed to swear. Yeah, I just swore too. It's tough. But yeah, I think a lot of part of the other reason I didn't get much better is I didn't have anybody to ride with because everyone seemed to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I see a lot of kids, you know, you see a lot of people in action sports come in groups or pairs and mm-hmm. you kind of feed off of each other at a mm-hmm. similar skill set and like lifestyle. And I just never had like someone to ride with mm-hmm. that wasn't like 20 years older than me. Well, Rochester, <laughs> Rochester's BMX scene and well, I guess the skate scene too has always been super clicky. Yeah. The kink guys kind of had a... <laughs> A thing um, that can be definable in many ways. I think uh, that could be said with a lot of groups. I yeah. mean, there's always been there's like the groups of kids that hang out and they have you know they put a name on their crew or whatever. And I think that's something a lot of kids miss now in BMX oh, yeah. is that like those those groups and those like companies or whatever are just homies that hung out and decided to put a name on their like hangout yeah that's pretty much all it is and i think kids think it's this bigger thing the iphone changed everything really because back in the day each group i was having this conversation with someone the other day and they were like (laughs) like holy crap yeah Yeah, but it seems so obvious to me because i was one of those guys like you'd have the crew of riders and then one guy was your photo guy one guy was your photo guy and usually there was one guy in the group who was the guy that had the car that was willing to drive all the time you know and it's like what do you what do you mean mike isn't riding what are we gonna pedal there? Yeah. You know, and now with the iPhone, it's like you don't need a filmer. Yep. You don't need friends. Like you, you could just you ask, even need a car. You, get you could Uber. ask, you know, but you can grab <laughs> scooter kid in the corner. Like, hey, you film this for me. And then yeah. there's that awkward thing where you're filming and you like you don't want to say like, dude, I'm I'm tired of standing here with a camera. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Phil Damadia. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and um, oh shit, crashed. Lost. Yeah, it's getting too popular. Apparently. <laughs> we can, i'll get this live stream back up we can keep going um but um yeah i mean i don't think i ever i never had that like group of riders because like i whatever happened i just kind of had a way to a way to ride without you know, i had fortunate yeah, yeah. enough to have parents that would drive me to a skate park if there wasn't yeah. one nearby or like you know when extremes closed and for a while the closest skate parks were uh were ex- extreme wheels and uh, I don't think Cranks is even open. Yeah, Cranks is way not even open yet. So it was either drive an hour to Buffalo to ride inside or drive two hours to around Ithaca to ride East Shore. And that was like every East other Shore. weekend. Yeah. Wow. So some of the you know like Jake Hamlin used to drive me out every weekend. We'd go to East Shore, or something. Eddie used to do that. Send the nine the whole way out yeah. to Buffalo. Now, one of the things with RASP, you know, the, the, a lot of people criticize the uh, the ramps, the layout or whatever. And um, that was a, a big thing. Uh, I, I know it was like dealing with Ed and Tony trying to make decisions. So with there's we, there's vlogs you can find them where Kevin and I talk about why we did what we did. But so you guys, I guess you tried to get input from the community. And I believe <clears> like the main section, each section was, a, you get, like gave a demo, uh, group of people to pick which each section would be you want to just give me a breakdown of what that was like yeah i think um what i say is rasp it looks like what happens when everyone agrees on ramps um everything i i really you know obviously i'm biased but i i think we had some of the best ramps i've ever ridden um they were painstakingly put together as Mm -hmm. you know with absolutely way overbuilt way over engineered but you know they held up like you're still if you go to bfs you're still riding a lot of the same ramps oh we we cut those things we dragged them across the park we put them back together we moved those things have been through hell and back yeah they're they're still kind of (laughs) solid yeah so i mean um the box line was uh well actually the, the box line was the last thing we finished and decided on because um a lot of people that don't even ride anymore were very opinionated on what needed to be built. You <laughs> say um, opinions are like buttholes, you know? Yeah, everyone's got one. <laughs> don't need to don't need to hear yours. Um, was it a? So the the first thing we actually decided on before we even had the space was the big street section. Um, a lot of the local skateboarders. Um, they all got together and decided what they wanted as the street section, and a lot of those guys are. Um, from a, you know, I don't know much about the skateboarding trends, but they're from a different generation oh, of yeah. guys that rode a oh, lot yeah. bigger and harder and, you know, like to do manly stuff. And mm-hmm. so they built a, a section that replicated that. So that's, that was, that actually never changed, um, from the original location that we were looking at into the, the 
mm. space BFS is then. Yeah, I think that's just because because the, the, extremes really. I think I don't think the skate culture was ever really into big ramps uh, on a larger scale. But Rochester just... having extremes one and extremes two was like that's what they had and it was yeah. cool and it was unique. So it molded what the good skateboarders uh, liked to skate and that yeah. you know they... got re- regurgitated into a, a simplified version at Rasp. Yeah. So our layout was also kind of um, designed to not flow, and that was like a um, you know thing people noticed but didn't know that was really on purpose. Even flow. <laughs> it was uh, it was an attempt to control traffic yeah, in the yeah. skate park because our thought was that we if we controlled the traffic better we could um, you know maximize the amount of people in there at mm. the time. So you know if you went to extremes there was people that would do lines that would go from one corner oh, of the yeah. skate park to the other and back. And it really just depended on how many people were there, how much mm. you could ride. Um, so we wanted it to be like if you had 110 people there on a Saturday, you could still get a session in and yeah, not yeah. feel like it's the worst thing ever. I think a lot of that's different now because of the way the demographics have changed. In at Extremes days, you know, I've never been – well, I was at Extremes once. But, you know, the, the ratio of core riders to just, you know, kids having fun being kids is probably way higher than now. Like yeah. now it's probably about 50-50. Then it was probably, I don't know. 70 30 yeah i mean i was i was one of those kids that was just like trying to carve around a bull corner and not realize i cut three people off on the way there just because i'm having fun like i think that's something to remember that those kids that are in your way are like what's keeping your the skate park you're in open totally totally. and like they're just having a good time and it's your responsibility (laughs) as a core rider someone who's been to a skate park a lot to you know not scare them off and teach them a lesson like i don't think you could do extremes again unless you had like a massive skate park that offered enough space that you could have a section like that part that was like you look at that place and it was cool super unique but that's not like from a high traffic center like my park is is very segmented and even then parents are like yeah that's why we have the new skate park map they're like oh well where does he go where does he go you know and i think ras probably did a pretty good job with that but they i think they could have um just utilized the space a little bit better yeah I mean, it's also hard to design a park that flows well hmm. with everyone. I know. Yeah, just, yeah, you can just leave the statement at that. Like, it's it's hard to design a park. Yeah. And, you know, everyone, especially because we've relied almost entirely on volunteer work, it was hard to tell people, no, we can't build that because hmm. we wanted everybody's input because the people who were building it were ultimately ones that were going to ride it and know what everybody liked to ride. See, when I was building, rebuilding for uh, BFS, it was so confusing and cramped together that they're like what do you what how is it gonna go and i'm like like never mind dave just just tell me what to do like for the next 15 minutes yep all right cool like, you're like do, i need 15 do, minutes to do you want to see the anyway. napkin again <laughs> yeah and ultimately the volunteer thing is part of what um really damaged the skate park in the long yeah. run and it's what happens in a lot of skate parks and something i think you've beautifully managed to avoid Except for me. No, well, well, that <laughs> was what, well, I first brought that up is that that was part of the deal that you, you know, it's fine by me. Yeah. You're like my only friend. <laughs> Same. So, <laughs> so I don't know what's going to, yeah. Um, Normally I have to try to bribe my friends. Like, dude, come in. I'll like, I'll hook a no, free session. You're like, yeah. just, just ride with me. And like, nah, dude. <laughs> like, I met you. You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like half the deal. All right, you get a, you get a whole skate park with ramps in it and uh, blaze rides for free. Yeah. Like, I, okay. Okay. <laughs> Or you that paid was for it. one it wasn't thing free. I did. You know, I was very, I was pretty upfront with that stuff with people that helped, and I had a conversation with pretty much every person individually, and they were compensated with ride time over a specific period of time. But there's still people from the build that that still come around that still help, and you know they help me, I help them. But yeah, Rasp was that. That was a big downfall for Rasp. Like anyone that ever worked there or helped seemed to have an indefinite. Um, and felt and, fe- and felt entitled to it it seemed too oh, like yeah. those people were like well i built i i screwed in like three ramps six years ago why yeah. can't i ride for free like i helped that's or like the uh, people... with um the rock city skate park project some dudes are like dude i donated like four bucks at a bug jar event in 2012 dude where's my fifty thousand square foot free outdoor <laughs> skate park man with lights and bathrooms and amenities jesus uh i wish you were exaggerating a lot i am not i know <laughs> So that's, that's, not, a, that's not that's not that is not the majority uh, no the, but it's a small minority of i think anytime you have um like a something that that many people work on there's gonna you know yeah. there's always going to be someone in the group that feels more entitled than the others having sure. done less work but 
that was something that happened at Xtremes too. Everyone was friends with whoever worked at the door and, you know. And Danny Bovey let everyone in. Yeah, everybody Danny let everybody. Danny Bovey used to live in this house. I know. <laughs> everybody, everyone used to live in this house. That's true. I almost came to a really cool party here until my dad, or Tom, Tom, like, cock-blocked me out of it. <laughs> they had, like, a cool photo of those. I was at that party. Which one? There was a couple here. The the crazy one. The, the one where they're shooting fireballs off the the front yeah, porch? The, yeah, yeah, the one, um, they had the DJ in the bounce house. Yeah. And, uh, I actually, it was, um, I drove up from Jersey for that. It's crazy. There's, like, a, there's like a group picture in the kink catalog that yeah. year, and, like, I'm in, I'm wearing a sombrero. <laughs> You know, it's, yeah, that's it's so that hilarious. That picture was always crazy because it's like Tom and Tony on the on the porch, just like yeah. shooting fireballs off the roof. And now that's my bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it was um, then before the skate park, I had a half pipe in my backyard that all the my dad paid for, and all the with the again the same story as before with the the money for my uncle. But uh, the local guys that built it, all the the pro cool guys that rode bikes in town, all built it, and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna have this party over it." at the house today you probably shouldn't let blaze go it's gonna oh. be wild it's like dude i think i'm supposed to be cool that party was crazy <laughs> they had um all these uh kegs of, of root beer and other non-alcoholic beverages mm-hmm. and they were gone like so fast people really like root beer fire fire Shout company came yes yeah, fire, <laughs> fire company the fire yeah, <laughs> it, dude, it was just like out of control meh no that's meh. not really rasp related but we no. can kind of swing back around um <laughs> so one of the I'll big loop this one of the things with rasp, um, it's good and bad. You know, when you have bigger ramps, you got a lot of run up, a lot of runway. Mm-hmm. And some of the, some of my regular kids that uh, grew up riding rasp, they didn't like VFS, and they still don't because like they're used to having a ramp, a landing, and a lot of room to ride out and set mm-hmm. up for the next ramp. It's just a very uh, different style skate park. Very. Sometimes I miss just like cruising across the whole street section there in the seven foot, but then you realize you're riding across like 10,000 square feet That's just the air quarter. Why I would never learn grinds because, you know, if I wanted to learn grinds on the ledge there, you had to ride one end of this park mm-hmm. to the other mm-hmm. for me to just mess up an ice pick grind and get discouraged. Like, well, we kept the best thing from Rasp the flat rail. Yeah. <laughs> That's Which all one? I ever rode at Rasp. <laughs> there, I mean, it's the, the city of flat rails. Dude, I only cleared that box jump like maybe four times same <laughs> <laughs> ask everybody who didn't like me i didn't clear that thing ever oh god <laughs> then those camel humps those were scary man people did some really crazy stuff on it but it was like for me it, it was like either you had to man up and do a big trick over a big box and learn it that way or like you had to do it into the camel hump and somehow not fall off the other side or isn't that yeah, like yeah. good spot to learn real tricks dude when we took apart that vert wall uh, if you guys haven't been to RASP, even the BFS in the, I missed that in the back wall. corner of the box section uh, at BFS, the vert wall went all the way up to the I beam. I don't know how tall it is, twenty four feet or something, twenty two feet. Yeah, and it's ver- it was vert at what like at nine or ten feet, nine so feet. it had like twelve feet of vert on it. Mm-hmm. Imagine trying to be on a, a ladder and trying to unscrew a piece of three quarter plywood that's thirty five pounds, and it's like you're twenty feet up on a ladder. It's we we like we were arguing like who's gonna do this like how do we like just called zippy so, when he when he was yeah. building it he was up there like walking up with you know, drill in one hand sheet of ply in the other hand slapping it up there duh, 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 duh. then he was like hanging off of it like oh come and save me I'm falling <laughs> we got to the top of the a vert wall the, the top uh two by four said uh if you could read, read this, this you're, you're too, too high. high yeah we, i remember when he put that oh, up that's there that's amazing We'll definitely get Zippy on the show one day. He is a piece of work. Shout Don't bring out up Zippy. 9-11. Zippy's a man, dude. <laughs> yeah, those camel humps were just a lot, a lot of lumber tied up in that. Yeah. And the same thing, that, that crazy wall between the 8-foot and the and the spine mini. That was a serious bit wall. We, didn't want, we wanted everybody to be able to wall ride it. It's like, so it was like built like you could drive a truck into 12. it. Dude, <laughs> somebody, it might be Kevin, someone's got the, we just tipped the wall over. We just, yeah. Someone recorded that. It was crazy. I wish I recorded it. There was a lot of stuff there that was just overbuilt or like kind of not. Well, Tony was pretty anal. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't really ride that much. So I think he kind of was a little <clears throat> bit like, oh, you know, someone's like, someone was probably like, dude, it'd be great to have a wall ride out of this. Yeah. Not being like, well, it's eight foot invert, so it doesn't really make sense of a wall ride four feet back. Yeah. But they're like, yeah, wall ride out of it would be cool. Yeah. You should build a wall ride. Yeah. <laughs> There was a lot of that, and um, 
being at the skate park more I've, I've been you know just i haven't been in the scene this much in a while mm-hmm. and it's uh i i've re- seeing people that aren't haven't ridden in a while or um just don't ride that often maybe they used to ride a lot they you know they they like to blame a lot of stuff for their inability to ride whether it's true or mm-hmm. not you know like mm-hmm. even they'll even admit it like oh i'm not very good so i'm kind of complaining about stuff but like a lot of people who built rasp were kind of like um people who hadn't ridden in a while and i think were you know trying to build stuff to make it easier for them or like build their wild dreams out of i think probably one of that. the things that really really hurt rasp uh was the fact that you got caught in between like when it was about skate parks and ramps and then you had extremes culture that was really pressing to still have big ramps but by the time rasp had closed like it was just flat bars and, and ledges and ramps yeah. like it was just little stuff and no one wanted those big ramps and i'm sure you know it'll come back around to being what's really popular again and i'm sure if you built the park if they had took were their fear of multiple young riders getting into collisions and, and instead of going we're going to spread it out they just built it smaller mm-hmm. more like in line with what i did they, they may have never gotten to that position yeah well like you said the the whole culture of bmx and probably skateboarding too i'm not as in touch really shifted in that time oh yeah like and just in rochester in general <laughs> i don't think people rode quite as much the last few years i don't know it's been yeah i just kind of have a weird scene it was funny rasp seemed like they had a lot of bikes there I'm, yeah i'm sure the percentage was higher but none of them <laughs> none of them paid <laughs> yeah that was the thing i mean yeah and that's something i've i've kind of always liked to point out is the last rasp both extremes yeah i mean this bfs so the last yeah. four skate parks are owned by bmx riders or bike riders yeah. or such and it's not it's not that um like not to talk shit about other sports but yeah. like it, the people who seem to complain the le- the most don't or, you know don't want to do as much well, i think that's a reflection of um what the defi- like god the financial side of, of what they're doing you know if you generally if you scooter it's not really the fact that you're a scooter it's the fact that you're just young because most yeah. young kids are scooter so in their mind when it comes to money and stuff and doing stuff it's like mom drive me there yeah mom buy me this kind of deal exactly uh and i'm sure in like six years it'll be different because scooters older will be older and more assimilated into everything else um you know with skateboarders like skateboards are relatively inexpensive mm-hmm. um you could have a lot of fun riding flat ground or a curb like that's probably partially why skaters don't are a little more on the frugal side you know so in that case like riding a, a curb or flat ground on a bike is a not, lot less fun not less fun yeah it's I still fun it. yeah yeah so it's and then the bike itself is expensive man you can't get a bike that's really gonna hand like the minimum you're gonna pay is 450 but that's yeah. not even good you're gonna pay a thousand dollars for the bike and then if you want to ride dirt jumps you gotta build them it's like yeah. so i think the fact that and that, the, the barrier to entry is a lot bigger. It's, it's, and, that, and that's reflected when you go down the line into mountain biking. Mm-hmm. You go to a mountain bike park, you get a lift pass. It's expensive as mm-hmm. crap. Mm-hmm. The bikes, if, you can't get a bike, a decent mountain bike for less than $1,000. It, yeah. It's like the, so for those guys to be like, come in, 10 bucks for bike night. <laughs> okay, can yeah. I have two just for fun? If you can't <laughs> buy two sessions. I don't know. 10 just seems too cheap. <laughs> you know, mountain bike tires like $90 a tire. Jeez, I didn't even know that. For good not, ones, yeah. it's tubeless ready and uh, and um, Kevlar. Mm. Wow. So yeah, I think just the sports dictate the way that people look at f- you know effort and finance. I'm not saying effort because skaters skaters probably put more effort in than anyone because the yeah. tricks are so freaking hard. Yeah, skateboarding is, and the, I think the I mean the culture of both sports is a lot different too. Like oh, you're saying, yeah. you need different a different equipment, different spacing and so i think skateboards uh, skateboarding still a little bit more punk rock where it's like well if they're gonna charge you don't need nobody else yeah you, you can't mean, get a flat tire then you're shit out of luck for a week yeah and it's like you know so if, if in their mind it's like well if we're, we're all paying this much to go to the skate park all the time why don't we just build our or yeah. all pay for our own spot and then then they take care of themselves you know they don't have to yeah do anything for anybody it's great freaking dope that's why there's a reason why bmx and scootering are constantly copying them and and, and they'll never yeah. ever be as popular as skateboarding because no. you can go to other parts of the world where the, where the um income is super low and it's like if they get a board as long as they don't break it they could skate for like a really long time yeah really and that's not gonna happen with bikes no ever yeah you're never gonna you know. you're never gonna be able to do that and it just looks so freaking cool it's way cooler 
I tried skateboarding yesterday. I'm bad at it, but it's so fun. There were some skaters at Rasp. You could tell. You knew immediately which dudes were from Xtremes that yeah. were still skated. And those guys that can ride big ramps, holy crap. So Spiled. freaking cool. That uh, What's his name? Gilly, that guy. I don't know him. Stephen Gilly. He's kind of kind of a scary looking dude. He's tall and kind of gangly, a lot of tattoos. Mm-hmm. He's you know old school skateboard looking guy. He do these Smith grinds on the seven foot across the channel, like just steezed out. Oof, yeah, he kind of yeah. did the puppet hands when he skated. Yeah. I used to like watching. Um, did you ever uh, watch Dylan Liam skate? No. I think he was pretty much done by the time you moved up here. But um, at Extremes, he used to like three sixty that long and low box Holy on a shit. skateboard. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, and he was like, he got on a bike like as for fun for a couple months. He and Tuan, they both. Oh, Tuan keeps every time he comes in, he tells me he used to ride. Yeah, he's got a kink. Yeah, he's still got like probably he's probably got one of Danny's old sweet bikes, and they dude they were doing. I was I was you know, finally getting good at bike riding, and they picked up bikes. I'm like, oh well, you guys are way better. What am I even doing here? <laughs> well, you got on time there. I got to meet Phil at the park at three. It's three. Oh, all right. Well then. All right. We'll probably wrap it up here. Uh, next time we get on, we'll probably maybe we'll pick up a little bit more about when I came into RASP or something. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Oh. This is what we got looking there. 32 minutes. So 30 minutes. It's a pretty good. That's good. Pretty good length. It's yeah, a if good we were size. on. Yeah. It's good. It's good. So we're going to go. 32 is like, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was cool. First sit down talk. Um, if you guys like this one, give me a shout. Tell us what you thought about it. If you have any other questions about Rasp or for Blaze, just comment them and we'll bring them up next time we have them on. Uh, if you want to be on, let me know. And everyone's be like, I want to be on. Yeah. Dude, I asked Fox to come on the other day and he's like, nah, I'm busy. I was like, what the hell, man? <laughs> he's so cool. I thought I was cool and the Fox is like, nah, dude. He's I like, yeah, I, got, I got band practice. I got to do swaggy ass tail ups right now. Yeah. Tuck his, take a while to tuck his shirt in. <laughs> Dude, you see the kids are tucking their so- pants into their socks? What the hell is that about? That's stupid. I I don't know. I can understand the floods, you know, floods or whatever, but tucking the whatever. Kids these days. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. You know the deal, like, subscribe, stay up to date. If you really think this is cool, there's actually a donate button on the uh, website at the bottom of the, the BFS website. You don't have to. We should. All. I mean, if you donate 20 bucks, I'll have you on the podcast. Yeah, now, I didn't Now I'm that. just bribing people. <laughs> Be on my podcast. Uh, all right, cool. Well, glad. Yeah. This is cool. First Thanks time with a person. Do you usually just have like like a doll over here? Instead? No, normally the camera's over there. Oh, okay. It's so much weirder talking to no one. I bet. Ugh, yeah. Cool. Weird. Yeah. I'd like to have more guests more often, but whatever. No, have Phil on. That'd be great. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I, I have to be like, Phil, we're going to have an itinerary here. Yeah. We're going to keep this to 30 minutes. Cause... Yeah. All right, we're going to go bike. Uh, cool. It's Monday, so you can't bike, but we can bike. I haven't had a day off in like over two weeks. So, so the last work. place I want to be is the skate park, <laughs> honestly. But <laughs> whatever, we're going to do that. Thanks for listening, guys. Yo, is that Terrell on the live stream? Yo, shout out, Terrell. Yeah. Signing off on ending the live stream now. Yeah. Sweet. No, don't go. Don't go. Ah.